Hey y'all, Peyton here with a updated new Clavio Builder tutorial on how to build your dynamic abandoned cart emails. So I have my other video, which I will link below in the description. You can run through that. A lot of the core steps are there, just the visuals are a bit different and um, I have a new updated way to kind of create a more aesthetically pleasing abandoned cart block that I've been using for a lot of my clients that I think y'all will really like. So I'll do it two ways, kind of the classic way, the side-by-side -side text with an image, it repeats, but then also I have a new way, which is basically stacking the two. Um, and it's kind of a, a little bit of a tricky uh, unknown uh, way to do it. Um, so let's follow along. Um, if you, uh, haven't explored the new builder yet. This will also kind of introduce that and a little bit of the editing and kind of steps involved with tweaking that template builder. I'm in love with it. It has its quirks, but I am truly, truly in love with it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let me shrink my face, get it out of the way. Okay. So first things first, if you're not currently using the new Clavio builder, you're going to want to go into email templates. So you're going to come into here and create a new template and you're going to create a new use new editor so when you go in to create this template you're basically just going to go ahead and save and return to templates so you have this new one you can reference you can see i have some other ones down here as well um, that are using it but this is kind of the easiest way to get swapped over when you do your campaign sends or your flows, you can basically just go in here, um, especially if you create a new branded one that follows a certain brand guideline and look, you can always refer for, from it in here. So let's go into our flows and get started. So when you're creating your flow, you want to come in and create it from scratch. This may be different in the future, but right now, if you go through the abandoned cart reminder default, it's not going to be on the new builder. Um, and also I think it's just better to kind of do it from scratch. You can really kind of customize it. You won't be scared to adjust things. You also get used to working with these dynamic variables. So it's really helpful when you build your review, review request flow, your post purchase, um, all that fun stuff that also requires a dynamic look to it. So we're going to create from scratch and we're going to call this abandoned cart test and create flow. First things first, we're going to drop in the checkout started metric. This will basically be fueling all of the dynamic data into the email. Drop in your email block and let's go into configure. This is where you're going to come in and select that new template you made. I'm going to reference a newer designed one that I have, but it is using the new builder. And sometimes this happens with the builder. I don't know why things get moved around. So just be careful when you officially <laughs> launch some things for some reason, stuff shifts around. Okay. So let's go and delete that piece. So we have, um, kind of a design template that we want to work from. Let's start building the repeating block that will basically produce everyone's cart once they get this email. So you're going to drop in a table. And um, a little different than the classic builder, but you're going to come over and actually let's go over into table settings. I'm just going to do a little bit of formatting. We're going to create that and make that aligned. And we're going to make this dynamic. So let's go into preview to grab our variables to work from. So we have here my cart. Um, so let's go ahead and grab... Let's go ahead and grab down here or has product. Let's grab the title so that way we can keep using it as well. So pro collection, you're basically going to paste in that raw variable you just grabbed and we are going to cut off these handles and we are going to trim away this specific information here. This is basically going to be, I mean, this isn't really, that's going to fuel the cart, right? This is what's going to fuel it. So row collection basically means when I'm looking through all of the data that clay or that Shopify sent to Clavio, each item has this piece attached to it. Um, so when it has this in here, it's basically scanning all that code that comes over and says, okay, this is what is, I don't know how to really describe it. This is what fuels the table is how I can get it, put it all together. You're then going to grab this last piece and you're then telling it, okay, for um, each collection that is pulling in this row collection, 
each item, which is this piece here, which is what is this like last little piece that tells it to repeat, we want it to repeat for each item. This is basically what this piece is here. If this is confusing, which I know it can be, and it's really hard to articulate, just copy and paste this in. So event dot extra dot line underscore items, and then trim away the S and just keep item. This is all we need to basically start making things dynamic. So let's click done just to save that. And let's go ahead and paste in that variable. Whoops, I don't have my variable anymore. Let's go grab our variable again. And let's go ahead and paste that in. Let's make that center. But we are now going to edit this so that it works with the settings we just applied. So what does that mean? We're going to trim away the event extra line and we're going to make this item. We're also going to trim away the zero. What the zero is saying is basically when in, in, uh, a cart comes over, you got item zero in their cart, item one, two, three, and it kind of counts from there. We want to delete this because we want all products. We don't just want the first product in the cart. So this basically just makes it evergreen. We have all evergreen, maybe not the right term, but reproducible um, so that it repeats for all items in the cart. All right, let's make that bold. Let's make that a bit more bigger in size. Okay, let's click done just to save that. And let's grab the image source. We're back over in our preview data and we're grabbing source right here. Let's go into our second tab, dynamic image, paste that in. Same deal, let's cut away the event extra line, cut away the S cut away the zero. This piece here is basically saying like you have multiple images for a single product and we're going to produce the second image in Shopify. I know it's a one. It's really weird. It's goes zero and then one. So we're going to produce the second image. This is all that piece is saying there. Okay. Let's align that center. It doesn't reflect for some reason, which is just crazy annoying. We'll save that. Let's do a little preview and make sure our stuff is working. Woohoo! It is working. Yeah. So with this, we could um, hyperlink these so you can grab either kind of like the checkout URL down here and, and plug that in. But this is now repeating and ready to go. So super simple. I mean, if you're following my old tutorial, same kind of rules apply, just looks a bit different. But let's go into the um, alternative look that you can do for this abandoned cart. So we have this section here, right? Let's make a new section below it. Let's duplicate this just so we have all of our main variables in place. And let's go over here and we're going to actually grab this link. We're going to delete our second column. We're basically just going to make this a one column kind of cart summary. So things will just be in a linear line instead of side by side. We're going to add in an image. We're going to paste this in. Let's do 350 for now. We can always adjust that. Let's apply, which is super tricky here is that it just doesn't show in this section here. But if you click your source code, you can see your image source. You can adjust the width if you need to. Let's save that and let's take a look. Do, do, do. So we have our first one. And we have our second one. My shop now button is above. Uh, I will move that. But basically, if you wanted to keep this very linear and we could shrink the images as well, because they're, um, you know, this makes it quite a longer email, but it's definitely more mobile friendly, right? We like mobile friendly, super important. So um, I always try to lean toward mobile first. And to me, this is more mobile friendly. So you can have them stack like this. Um, you know, we can move our shop now button, um, which technically is below there. Okay. There's quirks with the new builder. I will not deny. All you have to do is save and come back in and it'll be updated like it's supposed to. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the two different types of options you can kind of roll with. Um, as far as building the cart, those are the kind of the main differences. I wanted to make this video super quick and short. Um, so kind of follow those core things set your table settings, grab the content you want, plug it in, make sure to trim it so it matches the settings that you have here, which basically means cut this and turn that one piece from items into item. And it'll work. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, a super quick one here, but um, 
yeah, so you have kind of two options here that you can kind of work with. All right, I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much.